Ever wondered why some cars look like they could break the sound barrier but can't outrun a minivan? Stay tuned to find out and snag a chance to win our exclusive Car Enthusiast merch pack. Strap in, folks, because we're taking a trip back to the 70s with the Bricklin SV1, a car that looked like it escaped from a sci-fi convention. Malcolm Bricklin wanted to create the safest car around, because in the 70s, driving safety was more of an afterthought, like deciding to put pineapple on pizza. The SV1, standing for Safety Vehicle 1, because creativity took a backseat to acronyms, was a neon dream on wheels, complete with gullwing doors that made you think it could fly. Well, it couldn't. It was powered by a Ford V8 engine paired with a three-speed gearbox that was about as enthusiastic as a sloth on a lazy Sunday. This combo made the SV1's acceleration more of a gentle saunter to 60 miles per hour in a leisurely 10 seconds, with a top speed that wouldn't even excite a granny. Dive into the sleek, sultry world of the Fisker Karma, a car that looked like it was sketched by Zeus himself, if Zeus was into eco-friendly sports sedans, that is. Henrik Fisker, the man behind this vision, gave us the automotive equivalent of a supermodel, drop-dead gorgeous, with an eco-conscience. The Karma strutted onto the scene with the kind of curves that would make a Coke bottle envious, promising a green revolution with its plug-in hybrid heart. Here's the twist. Beneath its sculpted hood, lay not the thundering heart of a V8, but a 2.0-liter four-cylinder borrowed from. Wait for it, General Motors. That's right, folks. The engine wasn't even tasked with moving the car. It was just there to charge the batteries, making it about as directly involved in propelling the car as your backseat driver. Performance-wise, let's just say Karma's acceleration was more mild hybrid than wild ride. Zero to 60 took a leisurely six seconds, which, by electric car standards, was politely clapped off stage by Tesla drivers. It was like bringing a knife to a gunfight, but forgetting the knife at home and showing up with a spoon instead. Let's shift gears to the Porsche 912, the automotive world's greatest magic trick. A Porsche that looks fast, wears the badge proudly, but surprise, it's got the heart of an underpowered tortoise. Picture this, the iconic 911 silhouette that screams speed with every curve only to pop the hood and find a four-cylinder engine that politely whispers, I'm trying my best. Back in the day, the 912 was like the 911's less fortunate sibling, sharing the same stylish suit but none of the muscle. It was powered by a 1.6-liter flat four, making it the diet soda version of the Porsche lineup. Fewer calories, less satisfying, but you drink it because you're trying to be sensible. Driving a 912 was a lesson in humility. With its modest power, overtaking on the highway wasn't so much a maneuver as it was a well-planned tactical operation, requiring more patience than a chess master. Zero to 60 was less a sprint and more a leisurely job, reminding you that not all Porsches are created equal. Craving more unexpected twists and turns in the automotive world? Don't hit the brakes now. Keep your engines revving and subscribe for the latest rides down memory lane and beyond. Drop a like if you're enjoying the journey and share your thoughts or any surprising slowpokes you know in the comments below. Now let's shift gears and continue with more looks that deceive. Next up in our parade of pretenders is the seventh generation Toyota Celica. A car that looked like it spent its weekends tearing up racetracks, but in reality was more likely to be found parked at the local grocery store. Toyota, once known for its rally dominating Celicas, decided to take a different route in the late 90s. They turned the Celica into a fashion model. Stunning, sleek, and unfortunately, a bit superficial in the performance department. The latest Celica was dolled up with sharp aerodynamic lines that screamed speed and agility. It was the automotive equivalent of wearing a superhero costume without any superpowers. Underneath its sporty facade lay an engine that was a more sensible sedan than a race-ready rally car. Opt for the base model and you got a 1.8-liter engine that was about as exhilarating as a decaf latte. Strap in as we take a detour through the land of automotive doppelgangers to visit the Opel GT 1100, a car that looked like it was ready to tear down the Autobahn, but in reality would struggle to outrun a briskly driven golf cart. This little number was Opel's attempt at creating a baby Corvette for the European market. And visually, they nailed it. It had all the curves and allure of its American cousin, tricking onlookers into believing it harbored a beast under its hood. Spoiler alert, it didn't. The GT 1100 was the automotive equivalent of wearing a superhero costume to a job interview. It looked the part, 
with a low-slung body and sleek lines that whispered promises of speed and adrenaline. But under that seductive exterior was a heart that pitter-pattered rather than roared, a 1.1-liter engine that mustered all the might of a lawnmower on a lazy Sunday. Performance-wise, the Opel GT 1100 was as thrilling as watching paint dry on a rainy day. Venturing into the realm of cars so cute, you forgive them for being slow. Let's talk about the Honda S660 Mugen. Picture this, a car that looks like it's ready to take on a track day, with an aesthetic so sporty, it could be the poster child for pint-sized performance. Then you learn it's powered by an engine smaller than most motorcycle engines, and you can't help but chuckle. The Honda S660 Mugen Edition is akin to a Chihuahua wearing a spiked collar, fierce on the outside, but fundamentally still a lapdog at heart. This key car, a category defined by its limitations in size and power to ensure efficiency and urban practicality, is the automotive equivalent of bringing a slingshot to a cannon fight. With its turbocharged 660cc engine capped at 63 horsepower to comply with Japanese key car regulations, the S660 Mugen promises an adrenaline rush that's more like a gentle nudge. It accelerates from 0 to 60 in a time that allows you to contemplate your life choices, questioning why speed was ever a priority when you look this good driving slow. Last, but not least, let's muscle our way through the tail of the Chevrolet Camaro Iron Duke, a car that, on paper, promised the all-American dream of muscle and might. Instead, it delivered something that felt more like a gentle nudge than a ferocious roar. In the realm of cars that deceived us with their brawn, the Iron Duke stands out like a bodybuilder flexing foam muscles. When GM decided to slot the Iron Duke, a 2.5-liter four-cylinder engine, into the Camaro, they must have been aiming for efficiency over excitement. The result? A muscle car with the heart of an economy sedan. Boasting just 88 horsepower, this Camaro was less smoke the tires and more smolder gently. So, there you have it, folks. A tour through the annals of cars that looked the part, but forgot their lines when the curtain rose. From safety-first dreams to eco-conscious beauty queens, these cars remind us that in the world of automobiles, appearances can be both deceiving and delightfully endearing.